really felt like it's something I wanted to share with you. So I want you all to do this. I want you to close your eyes, but don't go to sleep. <laughs> Tom. <Ow. coughs> so, you did that with me. Close your eyes and visualize this, if you will. Let your eyes picture this. June 12th, 2022, at 9.35 a.m. The grandstands of heaven are being assembled together. All the saints that have gone before us, assembling for the next greatest event under heaven. Picture it. Gabriel positioning himself with the trumpet. And in that grandstand, a white horse awaiting its rider, the Lord Jesus Christ. As well as all the other saints preparing for a trumpet blast so loud that it'll be heard around the world. And then the rider comes and mounts the horse. And in the twinkling of an eye, church, the whole world will see Jesus Christ Amen. as he comes through those clouds <clears throat> to gather all of his saints that are here all those that are only but asleep. He's going to gather us all up, church. Think about that just for a moment. How great, how awesome of a picture that is going to be for all of us. Now open your eyes. Oh, the reality is this. The reality, he hasn't come at this very moment. Oh. The reality is, it is happening that way. I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is getting very ready to call his saints home. But the reality is, church, not everybody is ready. There are many who have walked away from the faith. There are many who have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reality is, the world is not ready. Mm. And why is that? Because we have not helped make it ready. In Psalms chapter 1, and verse 1, I've shared this scripture before. But as I was visualizing that awesomeness of that supernatural vision, I would call it. Made me pull over beside the road and just to look at the blueness of the skies as I looked east. And it made me think, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. Lord, I pray more than ever this morning 
May it speak diligently. Make it speak truly. Make it become alive in each one of us. May we see the, the desperate need of the world who needs Jesus. Lord, help us to be that servant that marches forward proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 You see, who wants to be blessed by God? I'm sure Robert would like to be blessed by God. I'm sure Amen. Karen would like to be blessed by God. <laughs> Dick would like to be blessed by God. Randy would like to be blessed by God. Matter of fact, I would say most affirmatively that there's not one single person in this room that would stand up and say, I don't want to be blessed by God. You're right. No. Why? Because being here this morning, we're saying, I have an interest in God. Amen. I have an interest in and what the Holy Spirit wants to say to me. I have an interest in what God thinks about what I'm doing. I have an interest in where God is taking me. That means you have an interest in the Lord. It indicates to me that you have an interest in growth. Wanting to expound upon the Word of God, wanting to be like Him. You see, the writer here begins this psalm by extolling the joys of being a godly person. One who obeys God and refuses to listen to those who discredit or ridicule Him. I have an issue with that. When people put God down in front of me, I have to stand up for him. When people tell me God is not real, I say, prove it. We have a very dear friend of ours that we've been praying for, and you've been praying for. Back in November of last year, she was diagnosed with ovarian and bone cancer. They were God-fearing people and they believed in the Holy Spirit. Doctors were not very hopeful. They kind of just kind of just shuffled her around. And they started her on chemo right away. When Virginia and I saw her over Christmas, <clears throat> her kids were coming to see her, not knowing how much time she had left, because they were not hopeful. She was stage four, is what they told her. Mm. But she never gave up on the Lord. She trusted God with her whole heart. She was not willing to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. She wasn't ready to hear the ridicule. Oh, she's got cancer. Nobody survives cancer. I don't know why she's trusting in the Lord. Why don't she just go peacefully? Why fight it? In that church, she continued to go to church. She continued to trust God. She continued to pray. She continued to have people pray for her. Fast forward to the last few weeks, or I say the last maybe month and a half, she was scheduled to go to the Moffitt Center 
to have cancer, a hysterectomy. She was not looking forward to it. She didn't feel like that's what she was supposed to do, but the Man, doctors have yeah. convinced her this is for your good. This will help you have a little more time. She went to a church service in Gainesville and this pastor prayed over her. She felt like the next day she was all better. I love that kind of hope. Yes. I love that kind of feeling where you just know it's all good now. She was talking to my dear wife and my wife said, well, before you go, why don't you have another examination? So she made an appointment with her doctor. She went to her doctor who sent her to another gynecologist. And this gynecologist was checking her. And they said, she said, why would you want to have a hysterectomy? You, you have no cancer. You have no cancer there. Praise God. Well, she canceled the surgery. Yes. So then they did a bone marrow thing where they, and I understand it's very painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because she had this PET scan that said she had bone cancer. That's pretty definitive. She goes and the bone marrow thing shows up negative. Well, surely the cancer must have moved, the doctor said. I don't know how that happened, but it moves. So she went and had some other tests done on some other parts, and they came back negative. Praise God. But the doctor said, nope, for sure it's in your bones because the first PET scan showed it's in your bones. And so she goes and she has another <clears throat> PET scan done. It comes back completely negative. Mm -hmm. You see, when we trust God and we don't sit in the seat of the scornful, we don't sit around those who have all the negativity. Matter of fact, one of the ladies in her church, when she said, oh, I don't have ovarian cancer, she said, oh, you don't? Like she was disappointed. <laughs> she had nothing more to pray for. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Church, when we focus and we totally put all of our all, all of our reliability on the Word of God, God can do anything. Amen. Yes. Amen. So There's amen. nothing He can't do. No. That's right. The writer here in the Psalms talks about a message of the entire Bible, and that message is salvation. You see, without salvation, there is no way to heaven. Without Jesus Christ, there is no way to heaven. And there's only one way. I know you got those radicalists out there that say there's more than one way. And everybody's going to go because everybody is loved. <laughs> everybody is loved. Jesus <laughs> loves everybody. But everybody ain't going. Right. Sorry. You're watching this morning. I truly don't mean to offend you, but I'm telling you, you have to be yeah. born again Amen. to get into heaven. Right. No there problem. are no shortcuts. Right. There are no, if I pay a couple hundred thousand dollars to a charity of God's choice, I'm, I'm a shoe in. No. It won't even get you a grain of sand on the beach of the river of life. There is no formula for blessing that does not start with faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by what? Word the God. Word of God. Without studying the Word of God, how can we know? How can we understand? I love this psalm. I was reading it this morning, and I was like, Lord, this is not exactly what I wanted to share. This I've read this already. I've shared this with the church already. And he wouldn't let me remove the page. Mm -hmm. 
Listen. Listen to what that says. Sitting in the seat of the swamp. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. For he what? His law doeth he meditate day and night. How can we know the law of the Lord if we don't study it? If we don't meditate on it? Yeah. <coughs> and listen, I'm not saying the meditation type, you know, the guy that sits with the knees, legs crossed, and arms crossed. I'm not talking about that kind of meditation. <laughs> I'm talking about sincere, genuine study of God's Word. Meditating on what He's given you, what He's feeding you with. Right. That meditation is food. For our nourishment. <coughs> but see, there's a threefold danger, I believe, that he talks about here. <coughs> and that threefold danger is walking in the counsel of the ungodly. I have found that many ungodly people are ready to give you advice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Roll over and there down. are people who are not godly, who can't wait to tell you what's wrong with you. Oh, yeah. But I'm telling you what, I don't listen to that. I wait for God to tell me what's wrong with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I ask him to fix it. So often, though, church, so often, the body of Christ concedes or yields to the counsel of the ungodly. How do we do that? We do it through literature. <clears throat> maybe in the form of advertising. Or maybe in the form of entertainment. There's some form, I'm telling you church, there are some form of people trying to distract you from what God is wanting you to know. Yeah. He's wanting to share with you. He's wanting to show you. But people want to keep getting in the way of muddling, muddling up the water so that, so that you're distracted. Standing in the ways of sinners. First you listen, then you live. <coughs> As the twig is back, can somebody give me a drink? But then he says, sitting in the seat of the scornful. Note the progression here. Note the progression of what's taking place here. First he says, listen. Thank you, Gavin. Then adopt the standards. Now make fun of God's standards. That's what the ungodly do. They make fun of God. The standards of God. <clears throat> How many of you this morning would dare to say, you know, I have people in my life that mock me because I have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, yeah, I know. Go get your Bible and yeah. drag out that fictitious God that they read in that book. You know, the one that made that big fish and ate that guy and and let's not forget about the one where they threw the guy in the cave with the lions and he still came out all one piece. <laughs> oh, let's not forget about the, the guys we threw in the fire, you know, right. ten times hotter, you know. He, I mean, that place was raging and they came out and didn't even have the smell of smoke on. Now, how could you believe such fairy tales? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. How could you believe in this guy who flies around with a sword and a ship and got this little girl that called Tinkerbell that flies through the sky sprinkling paint. How can you believe that? <laughs> but yet that's what we want to tell children is real. There's nothing more real than the Word of God. There's nothing more dedicated to the body of Christ than this right here. This is what we should be living by. This should be our standard of living. Yes. You see, he who delights in the law of the Lord, 
has learned to make God's word his delight. Yes. This is my dessert. I love dessert. <laughs> you want to know what kind? You know. Strawberry shortcakes. <laughs> Lemon meringue pies. <laughs> yeah. Ice cream. Done? I can go on. A nice pumpkin pie. Or pumpkin cheesecake with heavy whipped yeah. topping. Those are, those are good desserts. But this dessert here, church, that we have here, this is sweet. Amen. And it's something that we should be delighted in. Some find it boring. I think there are a few books in this Bible that I'm like, God, why do we really need this? <laughs> this one begot that one, and that one begot this yeah, one, and begot right. this one, and begot that one, and then they begot this one, and begot this one, and then they got this one, and then it just goes on and on and on. But I find that a blessing. Why? Because I believe everything in the Word of God from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, God has put in there for me to know. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's important. Yes. It's important to see who begot who. That begot that someone else who begot someone else. It's important. Some find it dull. But to him who is a die, it's delightful. Some say it's fantasy, but to him it's food. Yet to some it's just information. But I find it inspiration. Because when I want to be inspired, all I have to do is open up the Word of God, and I can be inspired. I can have that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Even when it talks about the wars. And it talks about the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. But not many will make God's word their delight. You see, they move against the tide. And to do that, you must decide to become the minority. David's delight, we find in the Psalms in 119 and 16, he says, I will delight myself in his statutes. I will not forget thy word. Yeah. And in verse 47, he says, I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. And in verse 77, he says, let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live. For the law is my delight. Is the law of God your delight? Do you know what the law is? When you begin to study God's word, those first five books of the Bible are the law. When you begin to study those, you begin to understand what the law is. You begin to understand why it is so delightful to pick up the word of God and begin to read it every single day. Meditating on it day and night. But when the psalmist then begins to say, And he shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's the destiny of the blessed man. Being like that tree planted along the rivers of water. What a beautiful illustration because we know that the trees, the roots, they, they dig down deep, they go into the stream. And I believe that river represents the Holy Spirit. You see, because the more we drink of God's word, the more we become filled with God's word. The Holy Spirit begins to rise up in you and you begin to have the, the boldness to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we desire, church. Yes. To be bold witnesses for Jesus Christ. The tree, the tree brings forth good fruit. I love, I tell people all the time, I don't judge anybody. I need to. And neither should you. 
But the Bible makes it very clear this. You shall know them by their fruits. Don't judge them, but you shall know them. What kind of fruit are you? <laughs> I think of some that are like shriveled up raisins. <laughs> you need to be a great voluptuous plump grape, not a shriveled up raisin. Maybe you need to be a banana. Not one with a bunch of spots on it, but one that's just got a tiny hint of green to it that's firm. Yes. <laughs> Some of you are pineapples. Some of you are hard, ready, stern fruit, but some of you have gotten soft. I'm not a pineapple eater. I don't eat pineapple upside down cakes. I don't eat pineapple nothing. <laughs> Why? Because I'm just not a pineapple person. I just don't like the texture. Kind of like God's Word. See, some people like the scriptures. They like all the blessings and all the glory and all the pomp and circumstance that comes into their life. But they don't like it when all of a sudden they see the part where they stumble. They get a bruise. They get hurt. I had a very fulfilling week this week. I started my Monday off. My daughter, she come over to our house and she kind of tried to clean the floor up for us and she thought she'd do something really nice and she sprayed some Lysol. You know, Lysol kills germs and everything else. But you can't spray it on a fake floor. Oh boy. I see. It's like ice. Oh. oh no, oh no. And here comes that. Bam. Mm. On my knees two times its size today. It still has not recovered. Mm, sorry to hear that. Mm. So then I go to work on Tuesday, limpy, but happy, unloading the truck and took the, and man, what pain came my way. This is as high as it goes, church. That's it. It doesn't get, no, doesn't get like this. Man, that ain't happening right now. And then I had to top off my whole week on Friday. I was stacking some metal cans with paint in them and I smashed my finger. <laughs> but you know what? I counted all joy. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you done lost your marbles. How do you count that joy? The Bible says count it all joy. Amen. Pain's only for a season. It does go away. I don't know how long it's going to take, but it shall go away. <clears throat> I'm just so happy that I am the, uh, a blessed man, that I am destined to be with my Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't know I was trying so hard to get there so quick. <laughs> but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. We know all things work together for those who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. These verses talk about wisdom. The more we delight in God's presence, the more fruitful we are. Do you hear me? The more knowledge you have about God, the more fruitful you become. And so when you begin to speak about God, God is going to bring those scriptures to your remembrance and you're going to be able to share. Amen. So we see the difference between God's blessed man and the ungodly. The ungodly are not so. It refers to all the above. Like the chap. The ungodly shall not stand in judgment. Stand is in the same as rise up. 
when Jesus calls his brethren home, when Jesus calls the saints of God home, guess it? You ever read the Left Behind series? Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going. Some will be left behind. I've shared with you a little of my wonderment about the God gathering us together in the air. I've solved many different going home themes when people are raptured off the earth. Some show nice folded clothes on a chair or on a bed or on a car seat. Then I saw one where there was just a poof, a little, a little pile of dust. But I think the most real one I saw, it just showed the clothes in a pile, a muddled pile. They were taken right out of their clothes. Shoes left there on the floor with socks inside kind of wrinkled down. <laughs> that I can picture. I mean, you think Jesus wants to fold up all of our laundry? <laughs> you think he wants to clean up a pile of dust? You see, Jesus has great things in store for the body of Christ. Great things in store. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Church, I don't want to think about brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, grandma, grandpas being left behind. I think this church, I think we have an opportunity to share with the world how blessed they are to be able to know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And how do we do that? Simply by sharing with them the love of Christ. Who does Jesus love? Oh boy. I gotta buy a couple more dozen <laughs> pens. Who does Jesus love? You. Jesus loves you. We need to share that with the world. You need to tell people that Jesus loves them. When I think this morning, when I think about what the psalmist is having to say here, I think that we need to understand that, that Jesus, the Messiah, the one who died for your sins, who's coming back again, doesn't want to come for a church of 30 people. How about a church of 30 people and say Dr. Dr. Donnelly's church may a, a church of 70 people or whatever. And Jesus is not looking to come back for 100 people. We have a serious work at hand. And that's to share with the world that Jesus loves them. Yeah. And that he is, in fact, coming back for them again. Yeah. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we don't express to them the word of God, how will they know? I'm going to tell you what, you can't expect to hear it on TV. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen on primetime TV on CBS, NBC, or ABC. It's not going to happen. They got more entertaining things on those shows that they would rather you see that would distort your eye vision. Somebody sent me a text the other day. If you've ever watched The Muppet Show, they had these two old guys that sat up in the booth. And then the one guy looked at the other guy and said, share Jesus around school. They won't even let him in school. And that's true. We don't share Jesus in our society because we've kicked Jesus out of our society. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to remove him more and Everything. more every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Church, we have a work to do. Mm -hmm. We have a work to do. Mm -hmm. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you want us to meditate on your word day and night. That you have called us to be followers. You have called us to be doers. Lord, help our lips to be silent no more. Help us to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to a whole world. To a world that is lost and hurting. And we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.